So what is a differential equation? The differential equation is basically an equation with an unknown function and one or more of its derivatives. A solution to the differential equation is the unknown function. For example, y double prime plus y equals zero. The solution to that differential equation is y equals some constant times the cosine of x plus some other constant, perhaps, times the sine of x. So c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. That's the solution to that differential equation. Where the constants can be any numbers, so you basically have infinitely many solutions to this equation. So what are they for? Well, they model things in the real world. Mainly, the application that you see in most books, like this one, is physics. So if you're studying physics, differential equations are a big deal because they're used to model things in the real world, which is huge. They also come up in other areas though, biology, finance, and so on. So in this video, I thought I would just grab this book and do a problem. So you can learn differential equations if you know calculus. So you have to know calculus. Calculus at the level of calculus two. So you want to know how to integrate. So as long as you can integrate, you can do differential equations. And now when I say integrate, you wanna have certain specific integration skills. Your, your u substitution has to be pro, like you should be able to integrate by substitution super quickly and correctly. You should know integration by parts, but more importantly, you should be a master at tabular integration. And so on, there's other skills that you should know like differentiation and algebra skills. So it does use a lot of math you've already learned. So this book here is an interesting book. This is not the book that I learned differential equations from. And it's not the book that I use to teach differential equations. This is actually just a book from my collection. I bought this for like less than $10 several years ago. And then I made a video on it and I realized that it's a very popular book. So this is a book that many people have used. It's called Elementary Differential Equations and Boundary Valley Problems. It's by Boyce and De Prima. And this is the third edition. I want to emphasize that because that matters. Oh, it smells good. It smells really good. This particular edition has answers to what seems to be every single problem, which is really awesome. I don't think that the newer editions are going to be like that. Most modern textbooks only have the odds. So perhaps only the older editions have all the answers. I don't know. If you know, if you know information, leave a comment because I bet a lot of people watching this video have used this book. So yeah, so let's take a, a, a really quick look at the book, really quick. I don't want to spend too much time on the book. Uh, I really want to just spend more time on the mathematics. I just want to do some math and make a video to show you some math. So let's just jump into it right away. Here's a super quick look at the book. So elementary differential equations and boundary value problems, third edition by Boyce and De Prima. And I don't know what happened there, that's torn. Let's check the copyright on this. I'm pretty sure it's really old. So third edition from 77, 65, 69, and 77. So this is from 77. And it basically has everything you need. I'll just quickly show you the contents in order to learn differential equations. It lines up well, by the way, with a modern course. Like if you take a course, you're gonna learn this stuff first and then this stuff second. So it goes along really well with what is taught today in college level courses. It even has Laplace transforms, systems, which are some, sometimes not taught, numerical methods, and some nonlinear stuff as well. And then partial differential equations in Fourier series. Look, someone wrote difficult, that was not me. And then boundary value problems. Then you have answers to the problems. So it basically has everything you would need to you know, learn differential equations. So let's start by doing like a really easy problem. We're just gonna do one problem, but if you don't know calculus, this might seem confusing to you. If you do know calculus, you might be able to follow along. We're just gonna do number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it down and let's just work through it. So this is the differential equation we're going to solve y prime plus 3y equals x plus e to the negative 2x. This is an example of something known as a first order linear differential equation. 
So it's first order because the order of the highest derivative is one because this is the first derivative. There's no second derivative. If it was like y double prime and that was the highest derivative, it would be order two, etc. But it's not, it's order one. And it's linear because it fits this form, dy dx plus p of x, y equals f of x. So if it fits this form, we say it's a linear differential equation and of first order because dy dx is the same thing as y prime and that's the first derivative. So to solve one of these, you first have to write it in this form. Some people call this standard form. And then the next step is to compute something known as the integrating factor. The integrating factor is mu of x equals e to the integral of b, big P of x dx. If this seems, seems contrived, uh, it's because it is. Okay, so this solution technique is really weird. And the derivation is not hard, but it does take some effort to try to explain it. I think I have a video where I derive it. Anyways, we have to compute this and then multiply the entire differential equation by this, okay? So big P in this case is three. It's whatever is in front of the Y. So in our case, the integrating factor is mu of x equals e to the integral of 3 dx. So this is equal to e. When you integrate 3, you just get 3x plus c, but you don't need the plus c in this case, okay? So you don't need the plus c. So mu of x is equal to e to the 3x. If you're wondering, wait a minute, you don't need the plus c, you're, you're always supposed to put it. What's gonna happen next is we're gonna multiply our entire differential equation by this. So if you did put the plus c, it would look something like this, right? Which is essentially this. So then you're multiplying by all of this, but then e to the c is positive. So you can just divide by this anyway. So it's, it's, it's redundant, you don't need it. All right, so we're gonna multiply the whole de by this. So we have e to the 3x times y prime plus e to the 3x times 3y. So I'm gonna write that as 3 e to the 3xy equals, here's where it's gonna get a little bit weird. So e to the 3x, okay, times x. I'm gonna write that as x e to the 3x. And then e to the 3x times e to the negative 2x. When you multiply these, you're gonna add the exponents, right? So 3x plus negative 2x is x. So it's e to the x. Here's where the magic happens. Here's where everyone gets confused. All of this, magically becomes the derivative with respect to x of, and it's always going to become this, okay? It's gonna be your integrating factor times the function you're trying to solve for. So in this case, y. And the right-hand side stays the same. So it's x e to the three x plus e to the x. Let me just explain that again. So this process of solving a linear first order differential equation requires or is done by uh, finding something called the integrating factor, which is this. We identify big P, we compute the integrating factor, then we multiply our entire differential equation by our integrating factor and we get here. This is where we are. Okay, now this left-hand side magically becomes this. And this is the derivative of this product. So we can check this, let's check this. Recall the product rule. The product rule says if you have f times g and you take the derivative, think of f as your first function and g as your second function. The product rule from calculus says it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So if we check our work here, it's the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of e to the three x, well, that, there's a chain rule, right? So it's e to the three x times the derivative of the inside. So it'll be e to the three x times the derivative of three x, which is three. That's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of y, which is just y prime. And let's check. Do we have that? We have that, we have that, we have that, we have that. So it magically works every time. If you're wondering why, it's because it's forced. So this, this technique will always force this to happen. And that's why it's so cool because it magically happens every time. And that's why it's a good technique. Now to continue solving, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate both sides. So when you integrate a derivative, it goes away. So this is just gonna go away, the ddx, because we're integrating it. So we get e to the three xy. 
You might say, what about the plus C? Well, we're integrating both sides, so we'll add it to the right-hand side. To integrate this, we're going to use something called tabular integration. I told you it was a lot of calculus. <laughs> so when you're using tabular, basically you write two lists, two, two columns. In the first column, you write the piece that after repeated differentiation is eventually zero. In the second column, you write the piece you're going to integrate. All right, so now we're going to differentiate x. The derivative is 1. Differentiate it again, we get 0. And then you repeatedly integrate this piece. So you just keep dividing by 3, basically. e to the 3x over 3. Divide again, and you'll get 9. And then you always start with the plus. Plus, minus, plus, And then you draw arrows. Follow the arrows, and you get the answer. So it's going to be x over 3 e to the 3x, minus, and then I'm just going to write it as 1 over 9. So 1 over 9, e to the 3x. Then we integrate e to the x, we just get e to the x, and then we add our constant. So again, in tabular, tabular works basically when one of the pieces, one of the, one of the, when you have a product, and one of the factors is eventually 0 after repeated differentiation. So in this case, x. If you keep differentiating x, you're going to get 0 eventually, right? So take the derivative, take the derivative, and you stop at 0. Then you write the other factor, and then you just keep integrating it, okay? So to integrate e to a number times x, you just divide by the number, right? So divide by 3, divide by 3. Draw arrows, boom, follow the arrows, there's the answer. And then we integrate e to the x, and then we added the plus c to this side. Technically, we're adding it to both sides, subtracting and combining them, but no one ever talks about that. But that's, that's why we're able to write it only on one side. All right, we're almost done. We just got to divide by e to the 3x. So basically, we divide both sides by it, but we can skip a step and divide each term. Boom. Oh, and then here. So we get y equals. So this is going to be x over 3. Uh, here it's going to be uh, 1 over 9. These are going to cancel, right? Here it's going to be e to the x over e to the 3x. So you subtract the exponents. So x minus 3x is minus 2x. So it's plus e to the negative 2x. And then here we can take this guy and bring it upstairs, and then exponent becomes negative, plus c e to the negative 3x. And the beautiful thing about this problem is we can check our answers. So this is the first problem in this book. Well, the first problem in the section on linear equations. So it's page 17, number 1. Let's find it in the back of the book and compare our answer. I believe it's 2.1. So 2.1 is going to be almost there, right here. So here's the answer. C, e to the negative 3x, x over 3, negative 1 over 9, plus e to the negative 2x. That's exactly what we have uh, here. x over 3 minus 1 over 9. Yep, looks good. It's the right answer. So good stuff. We, we did it correctly. There it is there, if you could see it, and there it is there. So this is an example of something you would learn in a differential equations class. Like if you were to take differential equations, you'd probably learn this maybe like the first week or, or the second week, depending on your class. So you would need to know a lot of calculus, obviously, to understand it. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I will try to leave links uh, in the description of this video to this book, if I can find it. Uh, to whatever editions I can find. Remember, this is the third edition. I don't know if the newer ones have the answers. Also, if you want to learn mathematics, check out my website, Math Sorcerer. I have courses on differential equations, actually. I just realized that. Dot com. I have two different courses on differential equations. They're both good. Um, if you buy them through my website, I'm pretty sure you'll always get the lowest available price because I lowered the price to, like, the minimum. Um, they're actually on Udemy. But please use my links, otherwise Udemy takes like, I think like 97% or something. It's really, or a lot, they take a lot. So yeah, um, mathsocial.com for math. And I've got algebra, calculus, differential equations, etc. Also, if you found this content useful, Patreon. So thanks to my Patreon supporters, I appreciate it. And thanks to my members for being a member of the channel. But yeah, good stuff, just a random video to show you an old school book on differential equations. It has taught generations of students, right? Till next time, good luck. Keep doing mathematics.